Hello and welcome to another IC3D tutorial. In today's tutorial, I want to show you a little bit about the Shelf Visualizer tool. Now the Shelf Visualizer tool can be found in your template library. And of course, like everything in the template library, to use it, all we have to do is double click or simply drag the Shelf Visualizer onto the scene. Now, the Shelf Visualizer comes in a couple of different varieties and each variety you can change the width of from the single shelf to the five shelf gondola, which is five single shelves, to open refrigerator units like this one here, or a closed one like this. Now, the dynamic and the container are custom shelves that can be used anywhere. The dynamic shelf will show up in your object editor, so you can apply a new material to it and customize it however you'd like. While the container is a completely custom shelf that you can place anything on and it will be invisible. So this is perfect for POS displays and custom shelving with our backgrounds. I'm going to use the single shelf to show off what you can do with the shelf layout. Let's add this to the scene. And each one of these shelves, if you were to pick the larger gondola or the refrigerator units, would come with individual shelf layouts for each shelf. Now, since this is just the single shelf, all we have to do is open up the shelf layout window, and that's going to be found in Window, Shelf Layout. And inside of this window, as you can see, I've got it open here on the right. When you click on the object, it's going to show you what you can do. Now, you can add models by dragging them into this open area from the model library, or you can click this small folder and import them from previously made OBJs or IC3 files. For today's tutorial, we're going to be using the model library and specifically our jars and containers option in order to import a wide variety of objects. Now, with the shelf layout tool to use, all you simply have to do from the model library is select what you'd like. I'm going to use this bell bottle and let's say the Boston round. <clears throat> each one will be placed next to each other and continuing to add just a couple more for variety. There we go. Now, customizing the different objects on the shelf and adding more or less to them is very simple. All you have to do is select which object you'd like to control. Let's do the bell bottle jar first. And then, as you can see, a number of different options will show up. The first one being number of items across. Tabbing that up, we can see that we can then duplicate as many as we'd like. Let's do, let's say three. Number of items deep and number of items high. Now this one doesn't make too much sense for stacking on top of each other, but it is great for boxes or other types of products that can be stacked. In T-Rim spacing, this means how far away are the objects from the center object. And alternative starting. This is going to alternate the rows alternate to rows and as you can see it's going to then push them forward or backwards moving down we have alternate row options we can move them left or right or back and forth spreading them out along the Z axis or we can rotate each row going from 90 degrees 180 degrees or 270 degrees now from here, item separation is for individual items. So if we were to increase this, meaning the items themselves would spread apart. And item start offsets. This is again for all of the items on the shelf. Where do they start? This is for lining them up on the shelf specifically where you need them to go. Or you can start them on from a different position, left, right, or center. Now you can also change the width of the shelf here as well from the depth and the width. Let's go ahead and set up a quick scene and show you how they interact with each other. Let's go into our Boston round and let's duplicate this again. Now let's go by four, add a couple back and then we'll stick with that. Maybe just uh, moving them slightly to uh, make them less perfect. And then in this case, let's just do one of these, a couple back, and let's stack these on top. 
And then our mason jar will complete our uh, line here. And we'll just put a couple of these and stack them into the back. And let's space them out a bit with item separation. Give them a little more room on the shelf. And there we go. Now, it is to note that the labels here are fully customizable. All you have to do is go into your items here. You open up the model data and you look at each label. So you've got price label three, one, and two. Double clicking each of these, you can actually customize using the textures tab. Now the material editor here will allow you to import in a new custom texture. And all you really need to do is make your own custom little plaque here, hit this folder. And as you can see, you can upload pretty much anything for that. And uh, you'll see that change almost immediately. Well, I hope this has been helpful for our shelf layout. One of our more powerful tools, especially for POS displays with that container or getting complete and really ready to go custom shelves immediately into the scene. My name is Adam Chop, and thank you again for joining me.